Welcome to our web tutorial. If you missed class today, it was November the 11th, then you're going to need to make sure that you check your hanging file for page 58, which is the worksheet for our notes for this tutorial. So you need a sheet of paper and you need to label it elevator notes and give it the page number of 59. So when we are talking about an object that is going to be accelerating, we use the elevator as a tool to help you understand how that affects the normal force of the object. So we're going to talk about the term apparent weight, which is the person on a scale in an elevator. We know that a person who is located at or near the surface of the earth will always have the weight Fg equals Mg. Now remember M is the mass of the individual, typically in kilograms, and G is acceleration due to gravity, which is always 9.8 meters per second squared. What you're going to need to write down from this are the bold printing and the things that are underlined. So I've underlined throughout this PowerPoint specific words so that it will help you summarize some important points that are in these writings if you don't understand what's going on. Now when a person stands on a scale, the reading on the scale is actually the normal force that the scale exerts back up to the person to support that person's weight. Now when a person is still and is not touching anything, it shows the weight. However, things get complicated when the scale and or the person experience acceleration. And we are going to use the elevator as a tool to show you and demonstrate how things get complicated. So here is case number one. There's going to be six that we're going to talk about. Case number one is where there's no acceleration of the elevator. If the acceleration of the elevator is zero, then you know there's only two possible situations for that object. And we've already talked about this in the past, but just to remind you, situation one, the elevator is at rest, the object is at rest. Or the, if the elevator is moving, it's moving at a constant speed. In those two situations, there will be no acceleration. So there's no net force. That is then a situation where we have f of n is equivalent to f of g. So as long as we have the mass of the elevator or the object, we can always find the f of g and therefore get the f of n if this is case one where there's no acceleration. So example one, we take a minute to do our free body diagram and on our free body diagram we know that there's no acceleration which means f of n and f of g should look exactly the same so i've tried my best to draw my green arrow as long as my blue arrow now I have to find my numerical value for my f of g. We calculate f of g just like we always have. The mass and the mass of the elevator handyman is 250 kilograms times acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we calculate that we get 2450 newtons. Well since there's no acceleration f of g is equivalent to f of n so f of n is 2,450 newtons. Easy peasy. Now, I'm going to continue on through this, but you pause whenever you need. In case two, this is where we're going up and speeding up. So the object that the person is in, and in this particular case is the elevator, the person and the elevator are starting from rest at a lower floor. The elevator is going to accelerate upwards. Now the inertia of the person would prefer to stay stationary, so the elevator floor and the scale has to push up on the person more to accelerate him 
upwards along with the elevator. So what happens to the normal force then is that it gets larger than the true weight. So we have this crazy looking formula right here. F of net equals MA equals FN minus MG. Where does that come from? And then it tells us that it was rearranged to solve for um, the F of N. Okay, how did you get that from that? So I'm going to explain that to you right now. So we're going to have to go back in time just a wee bit. Now we know that in the past when we started calculating our net force, that it was real simple. What happened to the good old simple days, right? So let's just say that we had a 20 Newton of our F of N, and then we were given, we'll say 50 Newtons for our F of G. What's the net force between this? Well, we just subtract the two and we show the arrow, right? So when you take 50 and you subtract out 20, you get 30 and in the direction of the force, which is down, okay? Now, we really never had a formula for that, but if we did, it would be the F of N minus the F of G, okay? Now remember, when we calculate the F of G, we calculate it using the mass times the gravity or the acceleration due to gravity. So if you look over here, this mg is the same thing as f of g, okay? And so all of this is the same thing as our f net that we calculated when we were given the normal force and the f of g. So our F net, here's one formula. That is this right here, okay? Now later on, when we started talking about forces, we introduced a different type of way to calculate it if we did not know our F of N or maybe our F of G. So, but maybe had acceleration in the mass. And then remember that formula was F net equals mass times acceleration. Now this acceleration is not talking about acceleration due to gravity. This acceleration is the movement or the change between velocities. So it should be given to you in a problem. Well, look, here is that exact formula right here. All we did was this. In the old days, our F net was calculated by taking our F of N minus our F of G, okay? All we're saying right here in all of this is we're setting this and this equal to one another. And all of that is F of net. So when we do that, let me erase this. MA is another way of saying F net equals FN minus MG. MG is another way of saying FG, okay? And we want to solve for F of N because that's what we're trying to do in these elevator problems. So I have to solve for F of N. So I'm going to add MG to both sides of the equation. Those cancel out. So I end up getting this very formula right here. So that's where this formula comes in handy. So an object then that is going up and speeding up has a Net, uh, normal force that is going to increase. So, if we know that the object is speeding up and going up, it says the elevator then accelerates upward, we know that our F of N is going to be greater than our F of G. We already know our F of G because we calculated it in example 2. It's 2,450 newtons. 
So now all we have to find is our f of n. It's not equal anymore because now we've included this acceleration thing, okay? So I have to find my f of n. Remember, taking my mg and adding my ma. Remember, mg is also f of g, which we already did that. So f of g is 2,450 newtons. Now all I have to do is find my ma. So my newer formula for net force, remember, is mass times acceleration. Well, my fella is 250 kilograms, and acceleration was given to me right here. This, remember, A is not, is not G here, okay? It's not the same here. So I put in 3 meters per second squared. And I get a great number. Seven hundred and fifty. So it's seven hundred and fifty that I'm going to add. And seven hundred and fifty plus two four five zero equals thirty two hundred newtons. And that's how I do it when I've got this scenario two. So scenario three, this is a scenario or case three is where we're going up, but the elevator is slowing down. So when it slows down, it has a negative acceleration. So the elevator and the person are initially moving upwards at a constant speed and slowing down to rest at a higher floor. But the acceleration of the elevator is downward, which is opposite to the upward motion, right, which causes a reduction of the velocity. So get this, the inertia of the person would prefer to keep moving upward at a constant speed. So there's a little bit of a resistance there. So the elevator floor and the scale effectively drop out just a little bit from underneath that person as that elevator slows down because that person wants to keep going up and if you've ever ridden in an elevator and you notice that you kind of feel yourself kind of moving up on your tippy toes okay so essentially what causes what that causes is a reduction in your f of n so the normal force is going to be smaller and so earlier we added mg and ma to get f of n. Now we're going to subtract them because our f normal or f of n is going to be lighter or less. So now I can draw my free diagram. I've got my elevator that slows down. If my elevator is slowing down, my f of n is smaller than my f of g. I know my effigy is 2,450 newtons because I've done it before. I calculate my net force like I did before. I think this time it's just a different acceleration. Yep, it's 1.3. So you're going to get 325 right here, okay? So to get my F of N, my normal force, my new normal force, i got to take my 2,450 newtons and subtract out this 325 newtons. Which gives me 2,125. fun stuff. Scenario four. Scenario four or case four is going down and slowing down. So we're going downward and we're slowing down. So in this case the elevator and the person are initially moving downward at a constant speed and then it starts to slow to rest at the lower floor. 
The elevator is going to accelerate upwards, though, just a wee bit. So the inertia of the person would prefer to keep moving downward at the constant speed, so the elevator floor and scale have to push up extra on the person to slow them. So this is kind of one of those situations where when you're riding an elevator and you're going down and just before the elevator stops, you like jump up and it gives you like a little bit of extra air time or something. This, this is kind of the calculation of that, of you. Okay. So in this case, our normal force is going to be larger. Okay. So F of N equals MG plus MA. We're going to use that same formula that we use in case two. Okay. So let's draw our free body diagram. Our F of G is going to be smaller than our F of N. because we're adding. So the elevator begins to slow down at a rate of 1.3. So I know this already, 2,450. That's not going to change because acceleration due to gravity does not change. But my F net is going to be different. My mass stays the same because my fella didn't lose any weight, nor did he gain any. OK. So to get my F in. I'm going to take my two 450 newtons and I'm going to add what I get for my F net, which is 325 newtons. And the F of N is 2,700. Oops, I got a little bit crazy with my writing there. 2,775 newtons. Fun stuff. Scenario 5. We've got a lot of scenarios, a lot of cases. Case 5 is where we're going to go up. We're going up, but we're speeding up also. So in this case, the elevator and the person are initially at rest at a higher floor. Now the elevator then speeds up in the downward. I'm sorry, I said going up. I meant going down and speeding up. Um, so let me start over this sentence. The elevator then speeds up in the downward direction towards a lower floor. So the elevator acceleration of the elevator is negative downward. So acceleration is negative. The inertia of the person would prefer to stay at rest. So the elevator floor and scale effectively drop out a little bit from underneath the person. Now this is a, this is exactly calculated like case three, but it's not the same case. Because look, the elevator is going down and going up. These make great uh, multiple choice questions. The going down and speeding up, what happens to the F of N? You know, that's a great multiple choice question. So it, does the F of N increase or does it decrease in this case? That's how you need to study this. So the scale, therefore, has to push upward with less force on the person to support the person's weight. So the reading of the scale is a number that is less than the true weight. So we're going to use this formula right here for this scenario, for this case, just like we did in case three. So let's go do our example problem. Example five says the elevator then returns to the first floor, accelerating at a rate of three meters per second squared. So remember we said that our F of N is going to be now smaller than our F of G. We know our effigy is 2,450 newtons. Our net force is going to equal our mass, 250 kilograms, times what they gave us, 3 meters per second squared. That total is 750 newtons. Okay, so two, four, five, zero newtons minus 750 newtons. It's going to give me my F. Ooh. 
you get 32,000 newtons, or 3,200, sorry, 3,200 newtons. There you go. And that's example five. Now, example six is really hard. I'm just kidding. Or K6. K6 is a free fall. And in a free fall, we're talking about no wind resistance. It doesn't matter how much that object weighs. They're going to hit the ground at the same time. Acceleration is going to equal G. G is acceleration due to gravity, which is always 9.8 meters per second squared. So when an object is free falling, its A is also 9.8 meters per second squared. So if the elevator cable breaks, the whole system would begin to accelerate downward due to the force of gravity. All objects in free fall accelerate downward at the same rate, which is G. The scale and the person are free falling together. So there is no contact force. Therefore, there's no normal force between the scale and the person. So when they are both falling together, there's no way that the scale can support any of the person's weight. So the apparent weight is zero. So A equals G. So scenario six, in scenario six, this is all we've got. <laughs> That's it. And so if we try to calculate our F net, okay, there's no way that we can get it because we can't get our FG because the person's not standing on a scale. So if they're not standing on the scale, that's zero. Okay, so we can't get our F of N. Can't stand on the scale, so that's zero. So it's zero Newtons. And that's easy. Okay, thank you for watching.